All right guys, I'm gonna show you how to build these boxes to get your own closet organizer put together in your own home. Simple, easy, not a lot of tools required. If you can read a tape measure and run a skill saw, you can build these too. What's up guys? So this is a closet organizer I'm building for a customer. This is a super simple, easy way to build one. It's just several boxes stacked together in the pattern that you want. This has three sections of hanger rod divided by two sections of cubby hole boxes. So to make this process as simple as possible, I have two different size boxes. I have a 16 inch by 16 inch box on the bottom and on the top with five 12 inch boxes in between them. This is a very large organizer. It's going to take almost eight sheets of plywood to build this. But you can adjust the style of this organizer to fit any space that you have. Here I'm using the Festool track saw to break down my plywood. You can use a normal skill saw. If you have access to a track saw, I'd recommend it. This is my first time using it. The homeowner left it for me to use and try out, and I was thrilled. It's an amazing tool. But a simple straight edge and skill saw can accomplish the same thing. It'll just take you a little longer to line up your cuts. So here I'm breaking down my 23 inch pieces I've ripped into individual sides for the box. Remember to mark carefully. We don't want to waste any more wood than we need to. This isn't cheap plywood. I got this through my lumber supplier. About $33 to $35 a sheet around here. But it is sanded and it is cabinet grade plywood. I know the big box stores carry this in maple and birch just depends on what your price point is and what your budget is. So here I'm going to keep breaking down my 8 foot long by 23 inch wide pieces into the 11 inch and pieces for the boxes with the half inch on each top and bottom that gives me a 12 inch box. To make this process go as fast as possible, I had my pl plan drawn up, went through, figured out how many of each size I needed, made a list, and just started cutting. So here I'm cutting the tops and bottoms for each of the boxes, which are 16 inches. Those were all the same width. When you get down to the last piece on that, plywood the track saw doesn't work near as well so I like to run it through the table saw there you saw me forget to take the staples out of the edge of the plywood that is the Milwaukee battery powered M18 fuel table saw I absolutely love it for a mobile job site you can't beat it I hate cords and I hate tripping over hoses so here I'm stacking two pieces just gonna gang cut them try and get done as fast as possible get as much production as I can if you can use a dust collector with your saw, I'd recommend it. It makes the woodworking experience so much more enjoyable. You're not breathing in that dust, you don't get covered in sawdust, and that those fine particles are pretty dangerous if they get into your lungs. Now I'm not a professional cabinet maker, never have been, and I don't claim to be. I just play one on TV. But this is a project that honestly nobody should be intimidated by if you can build a square box out of four pieces of wood you should be able to build this organizer you can see there I forgot to cut all the way through I adjusted my saw a little too much if you don't have a track saw and you don't have a table saw to be able to rip this plywood evenly 
your local Home Depot or Lowe's has a panel saw, when you pick this plywood up, they'll be more than happy to rip it for you on their panel saw. So you only have to bring home the 24 or 23 inch pieces. It'll make your life a lot easier if you don't have access to professional tools. Back to the table saw to trim those down. So here I'm gluing all my joints and using quarter inch crown 18 gauge staples just to hold the joint until that glue sets. That glue is going to be stronger than the wood and you'll separate the plywood if you try and pull it apart. So this is just where you go into production mode. You get a top, a bottom and two sides and just start gluing and fastening. <clears throat> if you don't have a staple gun you can use screws just make sure you pre-drill so you don't blow out the end grain of your sides. You can use a Craig pocket hole jig. That would be a great use for that one because we're going to cover up the outside of these boxes on all sides. You'll never see the pocket holes. There's two ways to clean up your glue. I prefer to use a wet rag as I'm going. A lot of guys choose to let it get just tacky and develop a film and then they'll scrape it off with a chisel. You can see there I'm just checking it with a framing square making sure my boxes are square. So this is just production mode. You just glue, staple, repeat. I had to do that for 14 boxes. Well thanks for watching guys. Be sure and check me out on Instagram at Swag Carpenter and in the next video we'll continue on this project and I'll show you how to install and set these boxes into the closet and then we'll start building the face frames thanks for watching